So now I want to take a minute to talk about how XRF is able to provide these real-time quantitative values. Using an X-ray tube, we start by creating and directing an X-ray beam into the sample material. The lighting up of the sample occurs when the X-ray energy templar temporarily knocks an electron out of its orbital, ionizing an atom. In the process of transitioning from a positive ion back to electrically neutral, the lit up sample emits an X-ray energy that is specific for each element. The detector captures the spectrum of energy as displayed here. And beyond calculating the chemistry from the spectrum, uh, the elemental values um, can be used to determine the grade match. What's happening in the, in the algorithm basically is we're correcting for background and interferences from other elements. Once we get a net signal for each element, we're able to apply our calibration algorithm and determine the percent concentration. The, this process, as far as the user is concerned, is, is really real time. The test starts and the answer is directly displayed. The emitted energy uh, in, in real time is turned into a elemental analysis, as you can see on the right of the slide. Uh, the algorithms are different from application to application, but uh, all of them turn in a quantitative result. While the slide diagrams that we've been looking at show single atoms, in reality, tens of thousands of signature x-rays are captured by the detector every second. As long as the sample's surface is representative of the entire sample, fast, accurate, and quantitative results can be achieved in just a few seconds. This slide is meant to bring your attention to the fact that field x-ray analysis for analytical purposes is a near-surface test. Uh, in the diagram, we have something that is meant to be the thickness of a human hair. We call it a, a piece of stainless steel that's 70 microns in diameter. Um, if analyzing that with the Fox IQ system, the depth of penetration would be only 10 microns. So the reading depends on the surface being representative of the entire sample. Elemental limits run from phosphorus to plutonium. Typically, based on customer needs, analyzers are set up to measure from titanium to bismuth. By the end of the calendar year, the elemental range will be extended to aluminum as an alloying material in iron, copper, nickel, or titanium grades. Uh, typical applications 